A shooting in our Lee leaves one man dead and another in custody. University Center Market at UM gets a dramatic makeover. We'll take a look inside. And it's called a Gus NATO and it's caught on camera. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Jill Valley. And I'm Dennis Bragg. A man is dead following a fatal shooting in R. Lee this afternoon. The shooter is in custody and witnesses were questioned late tonight. MTN's Eric Clements was on the scene with the story. The call came in just after 3.30 p.m. Wednesday afternoon, a violent altercation in R. Lee. When law enforcement arrived to the scene, Lake County Sheriff Don Bell says they discovered one man had been fatally shot. The suspect detained. Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribal Police were first on the scene, followed shortly by Lake County Sheriff deputies. Tribal Fish and Game Wardens were also on scene, helping divert traffic. We first want to get here and make sure everybody is safe, and then we secure the scene and then uh, make sure we have everybody that we need to talk to in custody. That includes the suspect, a male, and three witnesses. The witnesses were shuttled to the Lake County Courthouse for questioning. The shooting took place on Sanders Street, just a block from Arley High School. Because law enforcement was able to apprehend the suspected gunman quickly, Bell says students and school faculty were not in any danger. We were in contact with the school, letting them know that we had people in custody right away so they didn't have to do a lockdown. So it's really about keeping the community safe. The ages and identities of those involved will be withheld by the Lake County Sheriff's Department until the family of the deceased is notified. The events leading up to the shooting are still unclear. Detectives continue to investigate. Eric Clements, MTN News, Arlie. And we'll continue to update the story with new details as we get them. With crime rates and adult arrests climbing, a new study suggests Lake County leaders should renew their efforts to develop plans for building a new jail. The report was requested by Sheriff Don Bell and prepared by the National Institute of Corrections. It's aimed at helping the county reboot plans to deal with the aging jail and overcrowding. This report was conducted in November. It found serious violent crimes had declined in Lake County between 2007 and 2011, averaging 55 crimes per 1,000 residents. But since then, the crime rate has soared to 73 crimes per 1,000 people, driven largely by substance abuse. In fact, more than 51% of the inmates were in custody because of alcohol and drugs. The report also found the jail population has been as high as 100 inmates in recent years at a jail that just has 46 beds. The crowding is being caused by an increase in how long inmates are being kept behind bars. And the report also found many of the building elements at the Lake County Jail pose safety and security risks with portions of the building that are out of date or dysfunctional. The report recommends Lake County leaders should continue talks about building a new jail. Well, we have several winter weather advisories that sprouted up throughout the day. Here now is Aaron Yost with more and our first forecast. Aaron. Yeah, things pretty quiet still right now. That is about to change, especially for those of us in northwest Montana as we head into the early morning hours. Today, though, as I mentioned, pretty quiet out ahead of this next more organized system. Hamilton today for Security Bank ICAM showing you some of those low clouds. Of course, a lot of us starting off with fog once again today. That's not going to be something we talk about running into the next couple of days. It's going to be this system now moving into the panhandle of Idaho. We do have those winter weather advisories, as Jill mentioned, across all of western Montana with the exception of the Missoula and Bitterroot Valleys. Biggest threat for northwest Montana will be freezing rain elsewhere. Some light snow accumulations. More details on the way. New at 10 tonight, the Environmental Protection Agency is putting the Libby Superfund site on a list of locations which will be a focus for new business. The news is a break for Libby, which has struggled under the stigma of con contamination for nearly 20 years, while the agency has cleaned up buildings and land throughout town from asbestos from the old W.R. Grace Vermiculite mine. That contamination led to the death of hundreds of residents and seriously slowed efforts to promote economic development. But now EPA is including Libby with 31 other communities where the agency will help to integrate Superfund sites back into service for economic development. Several locations are included. The former Stimson uh, Lumber Mill, the uh, Libby Groundwater Superfund site, areas at the junction of State Highway 38 and US 2, the Kootenai Business Park site in collaboration with the Lincoln County Port Authority and International Paper. That Kootenai Business Park site, in fact, is already zoned for commercial and industrial redevelopment. EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt says the agency is promising to work proactively to support reuse and redevelopment opportunities in Libby, noting there's already been an investment in the business park to get it ready for new tenants.
Firefighters in Evergreen made quick work of a house fire that broke out last night around 6.30. It started in the kitchen and spread to the attic. And even after a delay in locating the nearest hydrant that was buried in snow, fire crews were able to save most of the structure. The homeowners had working smoke detectors, so they got out of the house safely. The fire chief is now asking people to make sure your nearby hydrants are uncovered and accessible so crews can get to them quickly in an emergency. A Helena defendant already charged with stealing an ATM in Flathead County now faces the same charge in Lewis and Clark County. Corey Franklin was arrested last week and charged with burglary, theft and criminal endangerment. Court documents read Franklin and another suspect allegedly broke into the Causeway Chalet near Helena and then led authorities on a chase to escape. Authorities were able to get his license plate number, however. The ATM itself was located later that day outside of Lincoln, and Franklin was located on January 10th. Franklin also charged with changing the appearance of his pickup truck in order to avoid capture. He's currently on parole on those Flathead County charges, and bond in the case is at $40,000. With uh, crime being greatly impacted by drug use right now, Montana State prisoners are going to get another chance to overcome addiction. 30 inmates will be the first accepted into a new clinical, clinical, cl chemical dependency treatment program at the state prison in Deer Lodge. They'll have a secure remodeled facility providing a 90 to 100 day intensive therapy program. They have licensed addiction counselors, case managers, and a reentry coordinator. Inmates will be screened using a chemical dependency evaluation. Only those with high scores indicating a need for help will be accepted. A recent report showed a 62% increase in drug-related arrests in Montana over the past few years. Lake County Sheriff Don Bell recently announced he will be seeking a second term, and he is now joined by another candidate, originally from California, who has made a home in Polson. David Kaufman is a retired lieutenant from the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office who has served in the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve, whose unit was a part of Operation Desert Storm. With law enforcement, his background ranges from training officer to lieutenant. Kaufman says he feels his experience can bring some positive change to the place that he now calls home. This is my community. This is where I live. I cannot in good conscience sit here and allow this stuff to go on in my community without bringing forth and offering up to the public my wealth of knowledge, training, and experience to the community to turn this stuff around. Kaufman says he chose to come out of retirement and run for sheriff after reading the recent audit of the Lake County Sheriff's Department from the National Institute of Corrections, showing that the county has been in crisis mode for the past 20 years. There's convenience, but also class, and in just a couple of days, that already looks like a winning combination for the new University Center Market. It's a gleaming new store on the University of Montana campus where you can grab a bagel and a blend before hitting the place. All through the fall semester, there was curiosity about this corner in the UC where UM Dining was remodeling the former UM bookstore-run market. Now the plywood is gone, replaced with a solid glass wall. The design of the new market is pretty striking. It has a very open feel, and this glass front is like advertising. You can't walk by here and not want a bagel or a cookie or a nice coffee to get your day started. The previous market was a little bit dated. Uh, it, was, it was full of great products, but it was a little bit hard to navigate and so forth. So the, the idea was to lighten it up, create a, more space for students to walk around and actually shop and not just stand in line. We also had a significant focus on our Bear Claw Bakery, which we, you know, we, our bake shop is just on the other side of the wall. So we have the ability to use our talented pastry chef to supply all sorts of great stuff and also provide locally baked bagels. The new store is a vibrant combination of products, perfect for the grab-and-go campus lifestyle. Culture in the, the market before, we wanted to keep that as much as we, we could. And they had some natural, organic specialty items, and we want to keep that as long as, as well as keeping along with buying local produced uh, products from the community. Besides sandwiches and fresh baked goods, there's even those standard favorites for an all-night cram session, all tucked away amid modern lighting and counters of wood recycled from the old Missoula Merc. I mean, students are looking, are looking for variety. They don't eat three square meals a day any longer. We always say that they eat five meals. And a meal may be a glass of kombucha or a smoothie or maybe a bagel and cream cheese. Howard says the store fits the other changes UM Dining has been implementing, carrying the theme of fresh and fast, coupled with sustainability. Even a coffee club sponsored scholarship for students who aspire to those standards. We have another market across campus called the Corner Store, but that's on the residential side of campus. This is more on the academic side of campus and more transient um, students as well as faculty and staff. So we have the ability to kind of build that into our portfolio and it fits in just right. And with its central location on campus, those glass doors are open to the UM community and visitors alike. We're always welcoming everybody. We're here, we're here for all Montanans. 
The UC market will be open daily until 9 o'clock each night. Now I want a bagel or a I muffin know. or a cookie. I was going to bring Thanks back samples, but <laughs> I decided, I'm still trying to hold that New Year's resolution. <laughs> well, coming up next, Aaron has the details on a wet outlook to close out our week. And have you ever heard of a Gus NATO? One was caught on video. We'll have it coming up next here on KFAX.